Last week, Monty Python and Faulty Towers legend John Cleese ended his third marriage in a Californian court. The deal astonished many. Cleese had to agree to give her €9 million Euros in cash and assets, including a muse house in London and an apartment in the Carlisle Hotel in New York, plus 700000 a year for the next seven years. Sixteen years ago, his friends say she came to the marriage absolutely penniless. Today, she leaves richer than her ex, John Cleese. Many commentators were left to ruminate about the old-fashioned concept of post-marriage gold digging with Cleese himself joking at least I know in future if I go out with a lady she will not be after me for my money with me in studio to talk about the reality of uh, such a line is commentator Ian O'Doherty and divorce lawyer Josepha Madigan good morning to you both um, Ian is uh, John Cleese right to be cheesed off or is well, he well he, rid he, of her at any <coughs> price he is very cleased off um and what's interesting, he came out with one very good line that shows that even though I mean, Cleese, despite creating the greatest sitcom of all time, he's not renowned as a particularly funny individual. But uh, he said the only relief he had was, could you imagine what she would have got if she'd actually contributed anything to this marriage? <laughs> um, which I thought was a nice thing. And now he's actually, he's he's got a one-man show out of it. He's actually called uh, My Alice Faye uh, Divorce Tour. Uh, well, which, fair play to him for which that. Which he said, and basically uh, he's promising to kind of dish the dirt and he said uh, that the money she gets will be from him dishing the dirt on her. But uh, there's something what I thought was brilliant about this case. Um, so it just shows the absurdity of it all. And um, every woman out there who's contemplating divorce who's listened to this programme can surely uh, empathise with this. She said uh, she needed that money because she would no longer be entertained by royalty and dignitaries in castles, which she'd become used to. So she has to be compensated years. for the, the so, lack. Yes. So the next time now, any lad, when you're having a, a row with your wife, just be careful that uh, she might accuse you of no longer bringing her out to castles to be entertained by royalty and dignitaries. It's absolutely absurd. She, she, by the way, came to this marriage with nothing and uh, he had already made the bulk of his fortune. Is that he so? had. So he had the money. Because usually the, the, in the British courts, for example, they look at how much money was made during the period of the marriage, how much did the, the woman mm. contribute by her... Uh, presence and encouragement and all the rest to that and that's how they reach a calculation but in this case I mean the well, money was already since, made ever since uh, Nicholas Mostyn in England uh, the QC he came out he's known as the the, the, uh, the money grabber because he's great for getting really really big settlements for women um, the, the, the rules seem to have changed over the last few years because we used to kind of laugh at Californian uh, community property and this kind of thing a 50-50 split it doesn't matter if you've been married for a half an hour or for 30 years, that the, everybody gets half. And it was ridiculous. Whereas in England now, we have a situation, for example, where um, Ray Parler's wife, the former England footballer, uh, Karen Parler, um, she, when they got divorced a couple of years ago, because she said she rescued rescued him from the laddish culture that existed in the Highbury dressing room at the time, um, she's now going to get a third of all his earnings for the rest of his life. And that seems it, it's insane. Bizarre. But what, what I've noticed... I mean, even, it wouldn't encourage him to go out to work. No, it wouldn't. Although I have to say, if it was me, I'd actually take all my money out of the bank and I would burn it um, and send a photograph of that. Because it's, but what I find interesting about this is that even looking at the message boards and going through the different blogs and the different columnists about the whole John Cleese thing, it seems that there's a real rage simmering underneath between men and women. And cases like this, and the Heather Mills is a perfect example of that, Cases like this really tend to polarise the sexes. And no, you have there men is a child, though, in the case of Heather Mills as a child. Uh, no, in the case of Alice and, and uh, John Cleese, there's no, no children. No offspring. And the irony and the, the real travesty of this case is that under the, the terms of the agreement, um, if, they were, if both Cleese and Alice Faye were to die, her kids, who of course weren't fathered by John Cleese, would actually do better out of this deal than his would. And there's no logic. And there's no sense, and there's certainly no justice in a deal like that. All right. That's California, after all. But, uh, I mean, closer to home, when you look at um, Heather Mills, for example, Chris Tarrant and his wife... Ingrid, yeah. Um, I mean, is it as anomalous? Um, absolutely. And, I mean, I think that the, the Ingrid Tarrant, Chris Tarrant uh, divorce was particularly vicious. I mean, it made the Heather Mills and Paul McCartney one look positively amicable. And But in the course of that case, she came out and she said that he needed Viagra, that he was a terrible lover, and she utterly trashed his reputation. And she managed to do one thing which I didn't think was humanly possible. She made people feel sorry for Chris Tarrant. <laughs> and he's not the most sympathetic man in the world. But and the interesting thing about her is she screwed him metaphorically and financially, but yet she's 
kept his name, even though she says that she hates him that much, because she now says she's developing a media career on the back of being his ex-wife. So, again, you have a situation where, and I really don't want to be encouraging anybody to feel particularly sorry for Chris Tarrant, but you have a guy who not only has his money been taken off him, but now his name has been taken and she won't give it back. And that, to me, seems particularly bizarre, that you can actually divorce somebody okay. and um, keep the name. Clearly, hell hath no fury like a, a woman scorned, but uh, don't you see the, the, the logic here that someone gives 16 years of the life, in the case of her life, in the case of Alice, uh, to John Cleese, and... Maybe she feels that they were the best 16 years of her life and now she's starting well, again. Well, they were definitely the best 16 years yeah. of her life because she got to hang out in castles and hang but out it, with But royalty. also, yeah. the, like when the, the successful older guy decides to trade in for a younger model uh, and it, there doesn't seem to be a problem for the older guy as long as he's got the dosh getting a younger model and... Well, no, the, the, I think that's more of a, a moral argument or an argument about honour and about Cleese's honour or lack of said. I mean, he has not come out of this uh, covered in glory by any means. I mean, this is his third blonde American wife. I mean, he has a pattern here. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he needs to basically hand up half his fortune. And I think it also it also plays into a very sort of um, outdated and almost misogynistic notion about women that they are just the little homemakers and they're incapable of earning for themselves. Yeah, if and I, therefore, could, if I could just add to that... Um, as you both quite correctly pointed out, there is a 50-50 split in California. The law is very different in Ireland. And you have to remember, we're just looking at the outcome of this case. We don't know the full details. Uh, Cleese himself has, in fact, credited his wife uh, for looking after him during his bouts of depression, during his 16-year marriage. Um, so there are various different factors that, you know, that is not written uh, in the media. But doesn't it seem anomalous that... All the money was made, virtually all of it, before uh, the, the the marriage, and yet he ends up with less than fifty fifty at the end of it, and and has to keep a, but, in, but, a man in his late sixties has to keep working into his into his seventies to pay her three quarters of a million a year. I, I think the lesson, uh, perhaps, Pat, is that, uh, and it may sound a harsh thing to say, but perhaps Cleese and Paul McCartney um, should have had a prenup. And a, a prenup, you know, they call it the life insurance policy for falling out of love. And it, it, perhaps it would have been a good idea for Cleese and for uh, Paul McCartney to ha- have drawn up a prenuptial agreement. And contrary to the prevailing public view in Ireland, prenups aren't uh, legal and they are uh, enforceable in Ireland. They uh, are enforceable. They are, actually. And certainly uh, judges will take the intention of the parties at the time of the date of marriage into so, consideration. Although they're not legally binding, the judge exactly. will... So they're not legally enforceable as such. You can't insist on it, but the judge will bear in mind... They will certainly take it into account. Yeah. Um, there, there was a recent case, Pat, if I might mention, yeah. Katrine Radmacher. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of this case. Um, she was a German heiress. Uh, her father was in the paper industry. And in this instance, in fact, it was a husband mm. looking for money from her. Um, they had, she had signed an agreement with her husband in Germany, uh, a prenup agreement, and he uh, challenged this in, in the court in England and was awarded 5.2 million. She subsequently appealed that to the Court of Appeal. And this is now a landmark decision mm-hmm. for, uh, for everybody and be very foolhardy for, for somebody not to uh, accept, bear this in mind, bear this in mind um, when undertaking a marriage. And what happened in the Court of Appeal? In the court field, they upheld, uh, they upheld. Sorry, they, they actually decided that the prenup agreement did stand. Now, she was obliged to pay her husband 700000 or to clear his debts. And also, he was given a house until her daughters or their daughters were the age of 22. Um, he but was certainly, a particularly odious individual now in fairness. I mean, but but he know. didn't but get the 5.2. He, he didn't, no. In fact, he, he was wealthy in his own right. So it just shows that for every case where there's a wife... Uh, looking for money from a husband, there's a husband looking for money from his wife. I'm not so sure. And, and that's I suppose what we have to remember is that the, you know these are human beings we're talking about. Um, there, there's a, you know emotional aspects to divorce. Uh, certainly in Madigan Slisters, we have dealt with a number uh, of instances, particularly in the recession patch, where there are people uh, who are struggling with trying to find a way out. You know, trying to find a way out. Right. Where we'll we'll come to the recession in a moment, yeah. but but first of all, the the, the myths you say are out there that need to be dispelled. Now, yes. one of the things you've already said, prenups will have a standing in court. Yes. Where, where a lot of people say yes. they have none. The judge will take them to God. That's yes. myth number one. Um, how many years before you can get a divorce? Four years in Ireland. Um, certainly, you have to have been separated for four years. You can in be the separated five years. within your own house. You can. And, and in fact, uh, technically speaking, a couple should be, could be sharing the same bed. 
and be and separated. Be, are you serious? Absolutely. I, I mean, it would at least be separate bedrooms for uh, no. four, four of the last five years. No, and that no. As long have... as there has been no normal marital relations. And, you know, if somebody asked me, I think you're a researcher, how can you prove that? Well, obviously you can't collude in a divorce or a separation. But, I mean, unfortunately, they do, in, in, in the economic climate... Want rid of each other, they will say, of course we haven't touched each other for four of course. or five years. Yeah, but, but it can happen, Pat. I mean, it's very difficult for people now. People are, are converting dining rooms into makeshift bedrooms. They're converting garages. They're living in the attic. Uh, they're building on showmers where the husband has, for example, been made redundant and can't afford to move out of the house. So this is the reality shomer. out there at the moment. I mean, these high-profile cases aren't indicative of the normal household in Ireland. The next thing, we've talked about this many times on the programme. The, some people believe get a divorce and that's it. You're rid of him or her. Mm. Not so. You're never Not. rid of them in Irish No, law. there's no such thing. Uh, in fact, divorce really is a misnomer uh, in this country. There is no such thing as a clean break divorce. And in my view, the legislation needs to be overhauled in this regard. Um, there, we're expecting more jurisprudence um, as a guideline in relation to these cases. Uh, but, but isn't it anti-family as well? Because if, for example, uh, one person bestows on the other uh, ongoing maintenance, mm. man or woman, 